Hey everyone, Steven here from Red Essence with another fragrance review. And this time it's on a fragrance from the niche fragrance house of Bond Number no. 9. And the fragrance is called Eau de New York. Now this is a fragrance that was composed in 2004. And the perfumer for this fragrance is Vera Venor. Now Vera Venor is a female perfumer that has received formal training. She has studied at Robert Day, which is a fragrances and flavors company located in France. But despite the fact that she's received formal training, uh, she's only composed two other fragrances that I'm aware of, to my knowledge. There's one uh, for the House of Avon that's geared for women. It's a very floral fragrance. And then she went ahead to compose a fragrance in 2007 for the House of Marc Jacobs. It's part of their like private line, and it's called Marc Jacobs Splash Cucumber, which is also a fresh, summery, you know, light type of a fragrance. So other than that, she's really been out of the picture since 2007. So I don't know if she's just in the process of composing uh, a new fragrance or, or if she's working with companies or if she's sorting out a deal or whatever, but haven't really heard too much from her since 2007. But 2004 is when this fragrance came out. And just a little bit of history on the company or a little bit of information on the company. Bond number no. 9 is a themed house. And this is a fragrance that remains very consistent with that theme. Now the company gets its name from its location. It's located on 9 Bond Street in Manhattan, which is a borough in New York City. And all of their fragrances are named after different parts of New York. Or for the most part, they're named after different parts of New York. There are a few deviations, but we have fragrances like Central Park South, Central Park West, both of which are very uh, self-explanatory there's a fragrance called Bleecker Street which is of course named after the street as is Great Jones and then Chinatown which is named after the district so with this fragrance the name Eau de New York is French of course and it translates to New York water so this is really more of like an all-encompassing fragrance it's supposed to represent the people and the crowd that you would find in New York and just a fresh feeling and the attitude about those people now this fragrance does get its name from the original Eau de Cologne which were composed in Cologne, Germany in the late 1700s. Prime example being a fragrance from the house of Maurer and Wirtz called 4711. And when we're talking about Eau de Cologne concentrations, there are fragrances that are very lightly concentrated with the aromaticity being set to about three to five percent so they really don't last for a very long time and that's not the case with this fragrance but also staying very true to the genre this is a fragrance that contains a lot of neroli and the original eau de cologne compositions were neroli based so this fragrance does have that classic touch to it but with a modern twist and i will let you know exactly what that is but next up we have the presentation for eau de new york by bond number nine Here we have the presentation for Eau de New York by Bond Number no. 9. This fragrance is available in Eau de Parfum concentration and two sizes only, 50 milliliters and 100 milliliters. This is the big guy, the 100 milliliter size. First up we have the box and I'm actually impressed by this box. It actually looks very similar to other Bond Number no. 9 boxes. You have this very intricate, complex uh, geometric pattern here on the front. It actually looks really nice. Uh, down here at the bottom right hand corner you have the name of the company written in that same gold lustrous finish and then in the middle here you have the name of the fragrance Eau de New York with the NYC logo in the middle this is actually what the uh, subway tokens used to look like in New York back in the day so I think that's a nice um, little homage that they're paying to that on the box and the bottle here you have some information like the concentration up here at the top the size down here at the bottom and then at the very back on the bottom right hand corner you have a sticker with some more information and then the UPC code right next to it now the box opens up in the middle and in the inside you're gonna see the silhouette of the bottle where the bottle rests and it fits into place very snugly as a matter of fact and right behind that what you're seeing here is actually a postcard with some information on the house and if you fill this postcard out and mail it back to the company they will actually mail you samples and uh, new offers and promotions uh, in the mail I've yet to see a sample from them so I don't know how generous they are with their sample giveaways but uh, nevertheless that's the purpose that that serves and one other thing that I want to mention here on the front of the box is the newer boxes actually have this multicolored pattern going on in this circle area right here so if you receive one of those boxes don't think that it's counterfeit or whatever it just happens to be a newer box but nevertheless I think this one still looks very nice I like the way that the new where one looks a little bit better but I'm not gonna complain and then as far as the bottle goes like I said um, it's very multicolored you're gonna get this milky 
uh, bottle with a pearlescent tint overlaying it. It actually looks really nice, almost like a lacquered finish that you're going to get on this bottle. And then these little mini Subway tokens, if you pay close attention, actually have the names of other Bond Number no. 9 fragrances within them. You have New Harlem up here, uh, Chelsea Flowers, Broadway Night, Gramercy Park, New Eats to NoHo, so on and so forth. And this pattern is repeated on the reverse side. On the very bottom here, you have a sticker with the serial number, some more information should be consistent with the one found on the box. The cap clicks into place very securely, which is a good thing. And then the atomizer is not the best in the game, but it works very well. It gets the job done. And that's pretty much it as far as the presentation for Oding New York by Bond Number no. 9. Now, as far as the smell for this fragrance goes, upon the initial spray, the first thing that you're gonna notice is that it contains a very strong citrus overtone. The most prominent note in this fragrance is of course the Neroli, and that's what allows this fragrance to remain very consistent with the genre that it serves to emulate or imitate. Now, along with that Neroli note, you're also gonna get a little bit of bergamot. It's actually a very beautiful, nice, clean, fresh, crisp, citrusy bergamot note, almost sparkling, if you will. But uh, one of the cons to this fragrance is that that bergamot note, as beautiful as it is in the introduction, it does not last for a very long time. It's fleeting. I would say you would get 10 minutes to half an hour with that bergamot note. Up until that point, you're only able to get the remnants of it and it really just disappears. Now, the Neroli note does stay and last in this fragrance for quite a long time, but it's also accompanied by uh, what I think is really the reason why this fragrance is as modern as I perceive it to be. It contains a pedigree note, and pedigree essential oil is extracted from not only the unripe citrus fruits of the pedigree plant, but also from the leaves, the twigs, the bark, so on and so forth. So along with being citrusy in the opening, it's also very woody. So one of the ways that I would love to describe this fragrance is it smells like not only a citrus fruit, but the branch that it's hanging off of too. So it's actually really beautiful in the opening. Um, now for me, I know that wood notes are constituted as base notes in fragrances because they have a lower volatility and a high, higher molecular structure. Now with this fragrance, I was able to smell the woods from the very beginning. So that's what really caught me by surprise. And that's what I feel like um, does this fragrance justice in terms of being a contemporary rendition of the traditional eau de cologne fragrances. Now, along with that, in the opening, you're also gonna get a lemon verbena note. And I feel like that's the note that really helps contribute to the linearity of this fragrance as uh, because of uh, the reason that you're able to smell it from the very beginning all the way up until the end of the fragrance Which is about eight to ten hours in this stuff lasts for a long time And when I think of lemon verbena I think of notes that really put it up front and center and allow it to really take center stage fragrances like uh, Green Irish tweed from the house of Creed and of course there's a violet note in that fragrance as well But it really highlights the lemon verbena note. That's not what's going on in this fragrance The lemon verbena note in this fragrance plays a very mo modest, very humble role. It kind of just sits in the background and it doesn't overshadow all these other notes, but I do feel like the only two notes that are overshadow everything else are the Neroli and the Pedigree. Now, as those citrus notes dry down because they don't entirely disappear, but as they begin to dry down in the heart of the composition, you're gonna get some florals. Now, the florals for me uh, tend to come across as very transparent. And the reason I say that is because they're white florals. You're gonna get jasmine, gardenia, and those are really the only two prominent florals that you're gonna get from this fragrance in the mid. It comes across smelling very clean, very fresh. It doesn't smell too feminine. I think this fragrance is very unisex. Anybody could wear it. And I feel like in terms of those two floral notes, they're evenly concentrated because I'm having a hard time detecting whether one of them is stronger than the other. So I would say neither one of them really supersede the other. Now. Formally, you do have a few other florals that are listed as notes in this note pyramid. You're gonna get a little bit of cyclamen and lily. Now, I light lily incense all the time, and when I used to live in Athens, Greece, we grew lilies in our backyard, so I'm very familiar with the smell, and it evokes memories from my childhood. I don't get too much evocation from this fragrance, and I can't really pick up pick up on it so I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's not too strongly concentrated in this fragrance and in terms of cyclamen I don't have too much experience with that note to be able to determine how prominent of a role it plays in this particular composition so I'm just gonna leave it at saying that the gardenia and the jasmine are the only two florals 
albeit transparent, that play the most prominent role in this composition. Now as it starts to dry down, you are going to get this musky undertone that tends to come through and I believe that musk is used as a fixative in this fragrance, uh, being the reason that this fragrance lasts for as long as it does. Along with the musk, you're also going to get some very generic woody notes. Um, I don't get any sandalwood in this fragrance. I think it lacks that creamy sweetness that sandalwood uh, based fragrances possess and I don't think it contains ebony wood as that note comes across as peppery for me, but possibly a little bit of oak as I see it bearing some similarities to the dry down of Montauk, for also from the house of Bond number no. 9. Now, I think you're going to like this fragrance if you like fragrances like 4711, of course, from the house of Mora and Verts, Neroli Portofino by Tom Ford from the Private Blend, and also Eau d'Adrienne by Anique Goutal. If you like those fragrances, I think you're really going to like this fragrance, and I would highly encourage you to try it out. Now, in terms of compliments or complaints, I feel like this fragrance is much more likely to land you a compliment. Like I said, it's very clean because of the jasmine, it's fresh and invigorating because of the Neroli and the bergamot and the other citrus notes that the, this composition possesses. The only thing that I could see somebody being potentially offended by is that I've heard and read some people making connections between this fragrance and lemon-based household cleaners. Now in my personal opinion I don't really see that. My nose doesn't make the comparison but I've heard and read people say that this could come across smelling a little bit like pine salt. In my humble opinion I think that that's just ridiculous. Uh, pine salt for me has more of a piney smell, like a mossy smell, and this fragrance doesn't have anything like that going on. And I think that maybe the person who made that comparison uh, was deliberately trying to be critical or was purposely trying to be negative. So um, I really don't see that going on, but just keep in mind that some people may consciously or not make that association. But honestly, I have received many compliments from wearing this fragrance, and I know that this fragrance is a compliment getter. Very underrated from the House of Bond number 9. And lastly, have I worn this fragrance outside of testing? Yes, I have. Um, I think it's one of the best, if not the best, fragrance from the House of Bond number 9 for the summer and I've been giving it a lot of play. It made my top 10 niche fragrances for the summer of 2013 list and I'm staying very true to that list as I happen to be wearing it right now and I plan on wearing it for the duration and the rest of the summer. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Last up we have the rating for Ode New York by Bond number 9. First up we have uniqueness and overall smell and this fragrance earned for me a 6 out of 10. Now this fragrance first and foremost I feel like is very linear. It doesn't change too much with the exception of the citrus notes toning down and the bergamot note disappearing completely and I do feel like the lemon verbena note really contributes to the linearity of this fragrance. Aside from that I do feel like this fragrance could potentially be um, interpreted as smelling very similar to common household citrus based cleaners and I feel like because of that association some people may be turned off by this smell, especially considering that it's very potent. However, I love the smell and I put this fragrance in my top 10 summer fragrances for 2013 list for a very justified reason and I think that's a testament as to how much I really do enjoy this fragrance. And I think this fragrance didn't earn too many points in terms of aesthetic merit, even though it does things in a very different and contemporary way, but it does smell very much like fragrances that came before it or preceded it. So I did take a point away from that. However, this fragrance does have a complexity to it and I do feel like fixatives are utilized very successfully in this composition, hence the reason why this fragrance lasts and performs as well as it does. So 6 out of 10 for uniqueness and overall smell and then next up we have longevity and this fragrance earned for me a 9 out of 10. With Eau de Parfum fragrances, 6 to 8 hours is common. This fragrance lasts on my skin from 8 to 10 hours, 10 plus hours on a very good day, but I would say the average is 8 to 10 so I ended up giving it a 9 out of 10. And then next up we have projection and I gave this fragrance an 8 out of 10. This fragrance projects very well for about 4 hours and I feel like about that third hour mark is when it starts to project less than an arm's length but in my books that's still excellent projection so an 8 out of 10 for that. And then next up we have versatility and I ended up giving this fragrance a 7 out of 10. I gave this a 7 out of 10 because 
It is very unisex. Anybody can wear it. I feel like this fragrance could be worn casually. As a matter of fact, it would make an excellent signature scent, especially if you're wearing it in climate-controlled environments. You can wear this one semi-formally and formally, but I feel like it lacks the sweetness and the playful nature that would allow this fragrance to be worn on night out occasions. And I also feel like this one is geared toward the summer, but because of the floral and the wooding nuances, you can get away from wearing it in the uh, spring as well but I don't think this one would hold up to the climate conditions of the fall or the winter. So that's my rating for versatility. And then last up, we have presentation. I already let you guys know what I feel about that. And I ended up giving it a nine out of 10 for presentation. And that, that brings this fragrance to an overall mark or an average score of 7.8 out of 10. So guys, thank you so much for watching my review of Ode New York by Bond number nine. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I reply to all of my comments or you can send me a PM. I'd be more than happy to respond to you right away. In addition to that, if you would like to join my Facebook group, please feel free to do so. I would love to have you as part of the family. I've left a link for that in the description section below. And please don't forget to subscribe for future videos and frequent giveaways. Again, this has been Steven with another fragrance review from Red Thanks for watching.